be talking about the question to sum, which is the first question on leak code. So given an array of integers and a specific target, let's return the indices of the two numbers that add up to the target. So if we look at the example below, 2, 7, 11, 15, with our target 9, right? Which two numbers here add up to 9? Just by looking at it, we know it's 2 and 7, but we're asked to return the indices, index 0 and index 1, as opposed to returning the value. And we assume that there's only one solution. So there's not going to be a case where in your nums array that there's going to be 2, 7, 3, 6, because in that case, there are two solutions right here. All right, we have 2 and 7, 3 and 6. And this is an assumed constraint that we don't have to worry about. So say, for example, for example, we start at index 0 with a value of 2 and our target 9. Our question that we need to ask is 2 plus what is equal to our target? Or in other words, you can say our target, um, or, you, or in other words, you can say that our target minus 2 is going to be the, uh, the pair. So it's going to be the corresponding pair to 2 which is 7 here. And this is the question we have to ask ourselves every time we go to a new element. So using the example from before with 2, 7, 11, and 15, we'll start at our first element right here with an index 0. And we ask ourselves, OK, the corresponding pair, which is x, um, what would it be? Is 9 minus, what is 9 minus 2? And that is 7. So have we come across a 7 before in throughout our iteration? No, we haven't. So let's just go ahead and store this value 2 and the index in an object. Now we'll move on to the next number, number 7. So there, our target 9 minus 7 is going to equal 2. Have we come across a 2 before? Yes, we have. So that would be our solution. We would bring out our index 0 and index 1. So let's go for another example. Say we start at um, our new array is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, and our new target is going to be 7. So starting at our first element, what is the corresponding pair? So 7 minus 1, our target minus our current number, is going to give us 6. Have we come across a 6 before? No, we haven't. So let's just store our current value and its index, and we move to 2. Now, our target minus our current number gives us the corresponding pair. So 7 minus 2, have we come across a 5 before? No, we haven't, and we will save our value and the number. Same goes for 3. We ask ourselves, OK, our target minus 3 is our corresponding pair. Have we come across a 4 before? And likely, again, we have not. And finally, when we get to 4, we're going to say, OK, 7 minus 4 is going to be 3. Have we, have we come across a 3 before? Yes, we have. We just came across it. And we stored its index value, 2. And we know the current index value, which is 3. So that is the flow right here. Every time we get to a number and we have the target, we need to find out what its corresponding pair should be. And that would be target minus the current number. So let's jump into the code right now. So earlier we mentioned that we needed an, an object to remember the values that we have come across. So let's instantiate that right now, and I'm going, just going to call that scene. And the purpose of this is to track the value and the values in the indexes of that we've come across. <coughs> Cross. And now we need to iterate through everything. And because we're going to be using the index, I'm not going to do, I'm not going to use this version <coughs> of the iteration, which grabs the element directly. We're just going to use our typical um, increment uh, index way of iterating through. So let i equals zero, i is less than nums.length, and i plus plus, we are incrementing one at a time. And now we want to know, okay, have we come across this number, um, the corresponding pair, right? So let x equals our target minus nums i. This gives us the corresponding number of nums i, which is our current number that we're at. 
<clears throat> so have we come across it and how do we check that? So we check it by going to, we check it by accessing the scene object. So if seen um, accessing it with the value X, if it's not undefined, meaning that we have saved something in there before, we wanted to return the two indices, right? So it was scene X that stores the indice of the corresponding pair and together with the current index that we're currently at, right? Now, otherwise, <clears throat> what happens is that is that we're going to be storing the value that we're at right now. So then we can just do scene nums i, which is our current value, is equal to the index. And right now we have stored the value and the index in the scene object, right? So let's go ahead and submit this. Oh, I am missing for let i equals zero. Let's do that. All right, that was a pass. Now, just to improve the readability here, this nums i, what we can do is just say, okay, let's say let cur num equals nums i, right? And then we can just say, okay, if we've seen the current number, then we, if we haven't seen it here, right, then we will just save it right here. We don't have an else statement because the case of it being defined will immediately stop the function. But we could actually just put an else statement as well. It wouldn't matter. And that is the end of the two-sum problem.